Hey guys, welcome back to the Giz Guide channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Intel i5 10300H from Intel. It was launched in the Philippines last year and we wanted to see if it's still able to perform greatly in 2021. So we're going to use the processor inside the Helios uh, 300 from Predator, which has the 10300H along with the RTX uh, 3060 from Nvidia. We will see if it can still play greatly in 2021. Now, before we begin, we're going to look at the specs of this laptop first. So right now, we have a 15.6 inch IPS panel with 144 Hz refresh rate and 1920 by 1080 resolution. Inside this thing, we have 8 gigabytes of RAM that is upgradable up to 32 gigabytes. It also has a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD storage and one terabyte hard disk drive. It is running on a 59 watt hour battery and Windows 10 out of the box. We're going to move on to the performance part of the review. So we're gonna talk about the different benchmarks that we ran through with the new laptop, and we will see what this thing can do. Okay, first up, let's talk about synthetic benchmarks. We ran the Intel 10300H through several uh, ben benchmarks that we have on our studio today. So we have 3 d Mark. Uh, Time Spy Extreme and 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme. Both of this uh, will be able to tell us how much uh, the laptop can perform in 3D rendering. So we have here 3,218 for Time Spy and 8,336 in Firestrike Extreme. This is actually pretty good scores. Uh, next up is Cinebench R20, R23 single core, and R23 multi core scores. Now, Cinebench R uh, City bench tests are for the performance of the CPU itself. So uh, here we have 3,263 for the R20, and then we also have 1,139 for the R23 single core score, and then we also got 5,531 for the R23 uh, multi core score. So this gives us a better picture that the CPU is actually performing well, even so in multi core performance, which is very impre impressive. Next up is Geekbench 5, single core. We have 1,128, uh, which coincides with the R23 single score. And then of course in multi-core, we have 3,905. This, this basically mirrors each other. The Geekbench score and the Cinebench uh, basically coincide with each other. They basically tell us that the performance of the uh, CPU is doing very well. Up next is PC Mark. PC Mark basically tells us the overall picture, just not just the CPU, not just the graphics, everything about the C PC. And we got a score of 3,432. That's not bad as well. Lastly, we have Unigine Heaven. Uh, Unigine Heaven 4.0 at 1080p, 1080p Extreme. And we got a score of 2,139. Basically, Unigine Heaven uh, simulates uh, like playing in a 3D video game because it will give us a good uh, score of how uh, the computer will be able to run games uh, with uh, in 2021. Now, as you can see here, the score will be flashing your screen and you can see for yourself how, much, how well it performs. You can also uh, screenshot this and then check it out for yourselves if you wanna compare with your current rig. Up next, up next we have gaming benchmarks themselves. So we have several gaming benchmarks from several games. Uh, first up is Rainbow Six Siege on Ultra. We were getting around 115, 115 frames per second. Uh, as you can see, Rainbow Six Siege has been out for a while now, and it is a very, dim a very um, f f demanding game in terms of because you want to be able to get as much frames per second because it is a competitive game. So getting 115 frames per second at 1080p Ultra is actually pretty good. And then we have Horizon Zero Dawn. This was uh, originally a PS5 game, but it's been ported to PC. And we're getting around 57 frames per second on its highest graphics settings on 1080p. Uh, up next is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're getting around 50 uh, frames per second on average on this game. It's also very demanding because it has a lot of things happening in the open world. Up next is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, we're getting around 57 frames per second at the highest graphic setting at 1080p with the RTX 3060. Uh, up next is the Metro Exodus with RTX turned on and DLSS turned on. We're getting around 49 frames per second. 
and when we turn off RTX, we're getting around 54 frames per second on Ultra with Metro Exodus. Okay guys, that is it for our performance benchmarks, uh, synthetic and gaming benchmarks as well. Let's actually move on to actual gameplay. We'll be playing Doom, uh, Red Dead Redemption, and Metro after this. Let's dive in. Okay guys, we're gonna play Red Dead Redemption 2 as Arthur. Now if you look closely uh, at the screen recording, you will see that our graphics is also being pushed to its limit. And so is our CPU. Red Dead Redemption is actually a pretty demanding game. As you can see here, we're at the 80% in terms of CPU usage and then 98-7% for the GPU. So we're really pushing our hardware over here and we're getting around 40 to 50 to 60 frames per second right now. Where's my horse? My horse should be coming out right now. There we go. Let's go. All right, let's go. We're going into the woods. What happened to our horse? Oh, he got stuck on the tree. Okay. Let's go. All right, so now since we're out of our camp, we're actually reaching the higher 60 frames per second because it doesn't have to load all those people. But we do have a lot of foliage here. Ang ganda talaga ng um, world building design netong Red Dead Redemption 2. It's like you really. Nakahuli ako! I caught a deer! I'm gonna get you... As you can see here guys, we're again in the... We caught a donkey. We're gonna skin it. Look at that graphics, guys. It's so pretty. The flowers, the trees, and we are now stabilizing at around 60 frames per second. Uh, we still have 90% usage of the GPU, and then we're also getting around 80 to 90% of our CPU. So our CPU is not maxing out, it's just in the higher numbers, but it's doing pretty, pretty fine. Ah, it's deer pelt. I thought it was a donkey, but it was a deer. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's ride our horse and we'll get out of here. Okay, guys. Now we're playing in Metro Exodus. As you can see, it's loading. Let's see how it performs on the 10 300h on the Helios 300. As you can see here, we're inside a very dark scene right now. We're inside the metro. We're getting around 60 to 70 frames per second. And as you can see here, depending on the scene itself, uh, it's consistent. We're getting smooth gameplay. And this is a very high graphic setting as well. So let's see where we can go. Okay, here we go. We have a Oh, well, I guess we're in the chase scene. And as you can see here, our performance is consistent with what we said earlier. Okay guys, that is it for our short gameplay showcase with the 10300H running Doom Eternal 
and Metro Exodus. As you can see uh, earlier, we were getting very good performance overall. We, our temperatures were well controlled. Uh, we were maxing out the GPU, but our CPUs were comfortable from either 50 to 80%, meaning the CPU were not bottlenecking our GPU performance overall. So what is our verdict on the 10300H inside the Helios 300? Well, Overall, I'm pretty happy with its performance because we were getting uh, good frame rates and good performance with our gameplay earlier, along with uh, performance from our synthetic benchmarks. We were also uh, able to play games smoothly at either high or highest graphic settings uh, on all games that we ran through it. Although, if we wanted to maximize the 144 hertz panel of this laptop, we would have to lower the graphics settings to reach it. But otherwise, if you just want 1080p 60 frames per second gaming, the 10300H paired with an RTX 3060 is good enough for a lot of people. Hopefully, this video has been very informative to you guys. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Neil. I hope you enjoy our video and short review of the Intel 10300H paired with the RTX 3060. If you guys want to know more about tech, you can visit us at gizguy.com. This has been Neil. You can add us at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at gizguy.ph, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. This is Neil. Before you guys go, I would like to remind you that the Predator Helios 300 is priced at $74,999 and is now available at Acer concept stores and authorized dealers nationwide. You may also want to check out other 10 gen Intel Core powered gaming laptops with the RTX 3000 series GPU from MSI and Gigabyte. This has been Neil and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.